good morning uh, first of all let me thank dushyan uh, uh, team uh, for inviting me uh, to this important event and also appreciate the st's uh, mahinders uh, the views uh, on, on mainly on the fiscal policy um, and, and the reforms that are going forward um, and um, just by looking at the the report i can i also see the value of uh, uh, contributions that ips has been making in uh, economic policy making and to the economy uh, is obviously uh, has been there uh, long time since uh, Dr. Kalegama, someone was heading this institution. Then I can see Dushne is continuing the good work IPS has been doing uh, in in policy making and research. Uh, so with that, uh, let me again con congratulate the IPS uh, Dushne and her team for coming up with this uh, important reform, uh, important um, research publication, and also looking at the. short term stabilization as well as the medium to long term uh, reforms those are obviously essential for us to come out of this crisis not only come out of this crisis stabilize economy but also to regain and and uh, have a growth path which is more sustainable in medium to long term so in my uh, comments i think i would like to first recognize the important contribution the ipcs has made in, in this publication first one is the the uh, in terms of research output is the uh, potential estimation of potential output loss in this kind of a crisis situation based on the research uh, uh, his empirical evidence and also some of the research i think that's one important contribution is obviously has no question Uh, that in this kind of a crisis, especially the debt restructuring, the default, and deep economic contraction, would obviously there will be permanent output losses. The question is that uh, how long we are going to take a path to recover and regain the output losses that that has been estimated uh, based on our research. This all depends on how successful. Uh, uh the important reforms that have been identified mainly uh, in this report and how successful the authorities would be able to implement all these reforms so that we can at least uh, regain and recover to the same levels of output that we are, we, are, we are going to lose in next couple of years or several years uh in terms of economic recovery that is an important question and obviously when i look at this in presentation i must say i'm little more optimistic in terms of looking at the output losses going forward uh, obviously that all depends on it is i'm optimistic because things that i believe that with the crisis is an opportunity the people in this country and the authorities certainly will realize the importance of import implementing important medium to long term growth enhancement reforms If there is a greater public support for those difficult reforms to be implemented, then obviously we can recover the losses, the output losses that we are we are incurring in this year, next year, and going forward, compared to what what we where we were earlier. This, this all depends on. I mean, this is why it's important to identify the short-term stabilization versus medium to long-term recovery. If you look at our history, we have seen obviously one good example is that we have we have been going to the IMF 16 times with balance of payment crisis, and all 16 times is only a short-term stabilization program that we have been embarking and stabilize economy within couple of years without implementing necessary difficult structural reforms. We have had these boom-bust cycles continuously. For several decades in the past, and this time it's much more complicated. We are in the crisis, not only because of the balance of payment crisis, also debt crisis coming together. So that's where there will be no excuses, or there will be no second opportunity for us to stabilize the economy and 
regain the output loss that we are going forward unless we implement all together. It's not necessarily only to stabilize the economy next year. It's some funds we are getting from the IMF World Bank, ADB and also some relief we are going to get in some of the industrial structure. That's only temporary relief that we are going to get. If you don't implement the more important reforms, growth enhancing and imbalances that we have seen several decades in this economy, then you will certainly be going back to same cycle, boom bust cycles, and repeat balance of the cycle. This time it could be repeat of debt crisis as well because we are in a debt unsustainable situation. This we are attempting to address both the balance of payment and, and uh, restore this macro uh, disassembled. That's why I think it's quite important that we want to make sure this time there will be no second chance going forward unless we do it right. This is important and this kind of forums and with the discussion in the intellectual community like here and also much broader public debate for people in this country to be able to understand the mistakes that we have done in the past and also to go with the public, the importance of going through the difficult, difficult process and get the broader public support and also that <coughs> support will certainly allow the elected representatives of their public to implement right things, even difficult and there, there should be broader public support. We well, I say this uh, because without public broad support, no reform can be sustained. Obviously, I am confident that we should be able to save the economy somewhere next, early next year with this financing assurance we expect from the creditors and also some short-term financial support. But if we don't get the broader public support for much longer term, much needed longer term structural reforms, there are a lot of things I can see in this publication. Cecil highlighted sustainable development agenda, this uh, the kind of sustainable development interest environment, and also some of the uh, uh, labor market reforms, uh, the female labor force participation, uh, and uh, protecting poor and vulnerable, all are important. Have proper social safety nets, and a lot more. I think I'm sure our IPS contribution, as well as the, some of the programs that government is basically trying to work out to identify those reforms, implementing broader support, broader support is important. This is why it's important for us to uh, basically get the people buying all these things. Without that, it's going to be difficult. And also, other area I, I would like to basically, in this kind of a public debate, what I see now is obviously when you are trying to stabilize the economy in this kind of depression, obviously this very, very painful process. There's no question about it. We have had the earlier the preempted announced the default, the preempted default, and then we obviously defaulted. It's part of the sovereign debt, restrictive, de restrictive defaults, and now we are in the process of debt restructuring, and also we are tightening monetary policy. But yeah, interest rates, you know, the tax package is, is quite more fine, especially in this kind of situation. And I can understand the criticism coming from the public and politicians and a lot of sectors that whether we would have had a different alternative approach to address this. This is an important question that we need to address. This is why I think now I can hear when the things are gradually stabilizing, but with the implementing difficult reforms, such as tax reforms, I can see now a lot of some more side noises coming up that whether we are going in the wrong direction. And I can hear some noises coming up whether this going to the IMF and going to the circuit is, is, is it the only way out? Uh, is a question. I can understand the question is coming up because of the difficulty in implementing all these things. But what I, why, why, what I encourage and appreciate from the people who are arguing that this is not the way to do, they should come up with alternative policy package and alternative way of doing that. That's quite important. It's difficult, easy to criticize that this is this are painful. 
and but it's not easy to come out with an alternative policy package that how we can recover stabilize economy faster than what we think now we are what we are doing so that's where i think people who are basically making allegation now there's kind of a, a conspiracy theories also been putting out that we have announced this default with an intention to put the country on the IMF. And we have seen previous two years, there was a homegrown economic model that had, had been pursued for some period and we ended up in this crisis. And obviously on central bank point of view, we all know that we had, I mean you can see international operation department officers also here, and the <coughs> how we basically settle some of the debt obligations commercial debt obligation. Last year we had settled one billion dollars of the ISBs. Fortunately, uh, the, we had resource about seven billion. We busted up resource to part A through the middle of the last year with a lot of money printing and also using resource to defend the currency and utilize. Luckily, what we got this SGR allocation because of the pandemic to all the members of the IMF, we got about eight hundred billion dollars. That was busted up to settle one of the long term, uh, the 10 year bond that is mature last year. Then, January 18th, there's another 500 million. That, fortunately, unfortunately, India agreed to extend our ACU liabilities, except for another two months. This two months short term loan was utilized to settle another 500 million dollars. Not only the we busted up our resource, last year 1 billion, this year commercially 500 million, and also because as she mentioned, government lost revenues, and the way it was settled, basically, central bank printed money and gave their rupees and used their rupees to buy our dollars. So this is a, one of the exceptional models that we followed in the last two years for external, to bail out external creditors and with the, with the strong commitment that the previous administration had to settle euro cent without restructuring, without in defaulting at the cost of printing a lot of money with, with loss of revenues and also busting up resource and losing short term money that we have got for in the line of credit, all these things to settle so this people. Now, anyone who is arguing against the current approach, I think the on, only way that a lot of people agree here also, is to have a restructuring debt, uh, I mean in this kind of debt was unsustainable already, because in, in year 2020, with the pandemic, we obviously authorities wrote to the IMF and asked for what they call traffic financing facility without any condition, it was available for a lot of countries. I think 78 countries got that assistance. But we were not eligible because even that time our debt was not sustainable. Even realizing that and refusing the reality, the truth that we were in a debt crisis and continuing printing money to service external debt and passing up our resource. And now arguing this is the bad, that what we are doing is not the right way, we could have done it better. And obviously we would have all felt if we continue that process, we would have this seminar here. In a couple of months, country could have been an angry situation. And you, we experienced that in a couple of months in May, June, July. It would have been even earlier with the, if we continue that process, obviously would I end up in hard defaults and then restructuring close program will be much more difficult. It will, it will take years because it's, it's not like we are offering our creditors that we are willing to recover or pay your obligations, give us some relief without telling that, saying that, okay, we are going through hard default. And it's like, you know, you go to a bank and quietly not pay your obligations and vanish, disappear. Or you go to the bank and say, please, I'm in a difficult situation, give me some time, I'll 
give you value back. So what is the better approach? And this is where I think people who are basically criticizing this approach should come out with what is the other alternative way without saying that IMF is, uh, is, is kind of a, a the conspiracy, that is circling is something that you could have avoided. I think that is other point I, I want to make. And going forward, what I say, this is obviously going to be a difficult situation. It's not easy. But it is, we see some kind of a improvement compared to where we were and where we were going to be if we did not come do these reforms, starting from March, April. And when you had, when you realize, the central bank realized you were no longer having anything to defend the currency, we all of a sudden, without doing any kind of prior actions, prior policies, we left the currency floated without any safe, safe, safety measures. That's where we had the almost currency crisis. Luckily, we were able to manage that. And we basically managed that thing. And also going forward, what is important is that Already we are having debt prices or un restored unsustainable debt and also the economic contraction and the balance of payment issues. So what we don't want going forward is uh, another currency crisis and also a banking crisis. There are a lot of debate going on where the banks are in a difficult situation. Obviously banks are in economic contracting, interest rates are high, action are depreciating, bank balance is getting weaker. But fortunately, we had a good banking system before the crisis. They have some buffers that can be utilized. Obviously, going forward, there will be some stresses. I am confident that we can, in the electricity circulation process, and even in our discussions with our creditors who are now willing to support Sri Lanka in the crisis, none of the creditors obviously clearly express they don't want a banking crisis in this country in the debt structure. That's very clear. There's no one interest. Even if the creditor to recover their value going forward, we need to have a strong bank, uh, banking system should be able to withstand the, the shocks. And with the proper stable banking system, economy can recover fast. That's, that's one of the necessary conditions, but not the, uh, the sufficient condition. That's one of the necessary conditions. That's so that the creditors need to believe that we have a strong bank sector going forward and also we, the authorities, will implement necessary medium to long-term structural reform that we basically discuss in here and next session we will be discussing more, that country can recover fast. And as a result, they can recover the relief they are going to offer to us in short term and they will be able to recover their value in the long term. So that is a win-win situation for both. This is the whole objective of this current program and the debt restructuring as well as the IMF program as well as the additional support we are expecting from World Bank, ADB and other multiple agencies. I am sure that we can stabilize the economy and also the important factor as mentioned is the implementing these uh, difficult reforms on a sustainable basis so that we will not go back to another IMF program in the, f in the future or we will know we won't go back to uh, again the literacy sector and going after it is asking for more relief. I think that's one. We have seen some countries, uh, some large international and several times, but some countries who have done it properly right have been able to come out of this crisis. On a medium long term basis, we have seen examples. So that's where we would like to go. And going forward, I think uh, now the people's understanding of the crisis and the, uh, the public support for difficult reforms and, and awareness of these things are quite important. That's why I think the institutions like IPS with these publications, and I, I, I would encourage this debate to be much more wider and more access to the grassroots levels of this uh, in our public so that you know, they will understand why this is important. This is what is lacking in my view. If you read today even financial journalism and the look at newspapers and even if you listen to some of the commentators when you, you know, hear the, the 
you know, newspaper, what's called Patra Register in the morning. I mean, what, what are, what is kind of message that you are getting? Is it you are getting the real true situation? Or is it like, you know, very popular short term, these things and making people misleading and not making people understand the difficulties and that's why it's important the IPS media, everyone will have to be reporting responsibility and approaching more public. I think that is a final request and the, my, my suggestion is to make it much more wider of the importance of this and all the difficult reforms so that we can go together with the public support and come out of this crisis and reach and recover but they were potential of losses, not in four or five years, but sooner, and also have market access sooner than later with the proper debt service. Thank you very much.